Welcome back to our devotional series. We're in Exodus chapter 4, now verses 27 to 31. Now the Lord said to Aaron, Go to meet Moses in the wilderness. So he went and met him at the mountain of God and kissed him. Moses told Aaron all the words of the Lord with which he had sent him and all the signs that he had commanded him to do. Then Moses and Aaron went and assembled all the elders of the sons of Israel. And Aaron spoke all the words which the Lord had spoken to Moses. He then performed the signs in the sight of the people. So the people believed, and when they heard that the Lord was concerned about the sons of Israel, and that he had seen their affliction, then they bowed low and worshipped. So Moses told God he's not eloquent, and so God sends, ta-da, Aaron, fanfare. And uh, they talk everything over. Moses tells him the whole thing, everything that God told him at the burning bush, all about the mission, etc. And they go back to Egypt, and now they're going to gather the elders. And of course, Aaron is indispensable in gathering the elders. Moses hasn't been there for perhaps decades necessarily in Egypt. Uh, meanwhile, Aaron knows all the elders there in Egypt. And so there's a, uh, Aaron has got a lot of connections there. And they're able to bring the people together. And away they go. So Moses is something of an outsider. And Aaron is kind of an insider. And Aaron's going to be the bridge to the leadership of the Hebrews. So the elders are gathered, and then, not Moses, but it appears that it's Aaron. Look closely at the text. Aaron performs the signs in front of the elders, and they see the first sign, and the second sign, and the third sign, you know, using Moses' staff. When they saw that the Lord was concerned about the sons of Israel, and that he'd seen their affliction, then they bowed low and worshipped. This is kind of a subdued reaction, isn't it? You know, you'd think they'd be leaping for joy and and all that. But remember, these people, they've been in Egypt. For generations, they've been in Egypt. Uh, these people haven't left Egypt. They don't go on vacations. They're working. They're under the strong oppression of the Egyptians. And so by now, you know, I think culture is a giant influence. We don't begin to realize how significant it is. And there were not a lot of Hebrews there. There were some, no doubt, but there were, I don't think there was a big, massive, a lot of Hebrews that were ready like Yes, oh, we're going to be delivered. Let's, yeah, let's start packing. I don't think there was a lot of people like that. No, they had become mingled with the, the culture of Egypt, the culture of the world around them, the religions, the worshiping of the different gods around them. These people were, you know, way advanced in themselves becoming Egyptian after such a long time. So they weren't jumping for joy. There's no strong reaction here. They, they bow low and they worship, but there's sort of a subdued, uh, I don't want to read too far between the lines, but... There's not a big excitement here. There's not a super duper, you know, happy, happy, smiley, happy face business going on here. Uh, there could be some trials. There could be some changes in our lives. Oh, no. And so, uh, but they, they, they submit. God has sent a deliverer. And, and well, this might work. So that's the reaction, kind of a subdued reaction. And so the elders are on board. Well, sort of. Kind of looks like they are. We're with you, Moses. And we'll see how much they're with him. But anyway, that's the picture right here. And now they are supposed to all go remember Moses and Aaron and the elders and appear before Pharaoh. And we'll see what happens next. 